Hi, I'm Eckerd Inik, lead developer of Rackforms, and in this video I have the uh, distinct honor and privilege of giving you the quick start tour of, of using Rackforms. So what we're looking at here is the login screen. This is what we will see after we're done with the uh, installation process, and so let's just go ahead and uh, log in and get started. So the first thing that happens when we load up Rackforms is we'll get um, this example job that loads in the editor interface. Um, and then of course we have a bunch of buttons and switches and there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let's, uh, let's actually break this down into the four main areas and start to start to look at each one of these in, in some detail. So the first main area is the header right here. And as you'll probably be familiar with a lot of other uh, applications, this is where a lot of the global attributes are uh, for applications. So for example, um, by default, we always load the editor interface, right? Like building forms. Though if I ever need to view form entries, I would just click an entry viewer. Um, same with survey viewer and user management and job ownership, right? Like we can kind of skip around to the main areas of, of the Rack Forms interface. The next main area is a silver bar right here. And this guy actually changes uh, based on which one of these main pages that we're on. So here, because we're in the form editor, we have a bunch of options that deal with building forms. Um, if I go to the entry viewer, these options actually change to be things that relate to viewing form entries. Uh, though it is uh, important to mention that all pages have elements in the silver bar. So for example, user management uh, does not have any special options. So this is blank right here. Let's go back to the editor then. The last big area is actually quite important right here. It's this gray bar. And there's really two main entries that uh, that we care about. Actually, I should, I should probably be clear. There's only one thing that we care about right here, and that is simply the job name field right here. So whenever we build a job in Rackforms, it should always have a unique name, and this is where we set the job name. We're going to do that shortly, um, but this is where we set the job name. And I should also mention that um, this is where we would set Rackforms to output to ASP.NET uh, C Sharp if we wanted to. But generally speaking, it's this guy that we care about. Uh, moving down below that then, we have the three main uh, core areas of the editor interface itself. So the first is add elements, and as the name suggests, this is where we're going to add pages, inform field elements, and database calls, and essentially anything that we can add to our job is found right here. The next area is the form preview area. This is when we do add something. This is where it, it shows up and where we can select items. And when I do select an item, any of its options, attributes, settings are always set from within edit form attributes right here. Now what's key about this is these two areas, that is edit form ad attributes and add elements, are what we like to call context sensitive, right? Like they actually change based on what we have selected in the editor. So for example, right here, I have a form page selected that's denoted by this F right here, F for form. And because I have a form page selected, um, I have all the options that relate to form pages. So do I want to output as PDF? What kind of layout do I want? Where are my analytics and tracking? Basically anything that relates to the form page uh, is shown right here. And of course we can edit those attributes. But because we have a form page selected, the add elements area changes to show those elements which relate to a form input field. Now the reason why that's important is because by default, uh, one of the key components of Rackforms, one of the key learning uh, features, is that every job in Rackforms has at least two pages. A form page to collect information from our users, and a confirmation page to send that information somewhere. So emails, database calls, web service, etc. So always two pages in a job, and therefore, because these two pages handle completely different functions, right, collecting information and sending it somewhere, um, the options that we add for those pages are actually different. So here you can see I have the form page selected, so I have form field elements, right, text fields, select menus, etc. If I select my confirmation page, well now we actually care about sending data somewhere, so I get my form entry delivery items. And this is where we find email options, SQL, HTTP requests, etc. So, okay, so that's kind of the basic interface. Let's build a job from scratch and just real quickly show you how that's done. So to do so, I'm gonna to go to my silver bar right here and I'm just gonna click create new job. Now there's three things that we wanna do whenever we create a new job when we're learning rack forms. The first is to mouse over where it says job name right here 
And if we click the white text right here, we'll pop open an editor and we want to name our job something unique. So in this case, I'm going to say demo, right? So step one, name your job something unique. Step two then is to click on this S button right here and add an input form. And then step three is to click on the C right here to add a confirm and submit form page. So three steps, name our job, add a form page, and then add a confirmation page. Now to the form page, I of course want to add elements that allow my users to input some data. So I'll select the form page by either clicking on one of the elements within that form page or clicking the header right here. And then I'll just select the elements that I want under my add elements bar. So for example, I want a text field, a text area, and a submit button. Now we kind of come to this, what I like to call the left to right flow of the page. So as we can see here, we've been working on adding elements uh, in this area. So we start on the left hand side. We've been kind of watching one area over right here, going left to right to see what elements I have been adding. Now it's time to actually change the attributes by selecting the item and changing the attribute that we want. Now in this case, Sortable Page Header is probably not a good title for a, a contact form. So I'm going to go to its label attribute. I'm going to select the text and I'm just going to change the text to something that makes sense. Now what's nice about rack forms is even though we have a ton of options that we can change, as we're getting started learning rack forms, the two areas that I just like to draw your attention to are the label field and when we have a form input element selected, the label field again and then name slash value. So label for text right here should probably be something like name. Let's actually call it your name. And the name slash value should be a simplified version of that value. So in other words, name would work perfectly. Now, the reason why we do this is in HTML, this is the element's name property. And it's really important as we start building more complex jobs uh, to understand that because that's how we're actually going to use the powerful features of Rack Forms like tokens, um, SQL inserts, etc. We always want to call our field something that makes sense, and name is a good name for that field. To possibly drive that point home, here's my text area. I actually want to change this to contact message, and then for the name value, I'm just going to call this message. You don't have to do this, it's just a good idea to start getting in the habit of doing it. Okay, so so far so good. I have a contact form that's asking for name and contact message. Now we actually need to, when we hit submit here, send this data off somewhere that makes sense. So to do that, I'm going to select the confirmation page, and then from its form entry delivery options, I'm simply going to select simple SQL right here. Now when I select simple SQL, anytime I submit this form, it's going to go to the entry viewer. So let's actually try that out right now. Click Publish Form. That's how we save forms and rack forms. Oops, hit it twice there. And I'm just going to fill out my information. So I'll just say Matt for my name. And I'll say this is a sample message. And I'll click Submit. So now we go to our confirmation page. Of course, the user sees the display element. They don't see this SQL thing here. It's kind of like a background instruction. And of course, the key is that when I go to my entry viewer now, if under load to save job, I select my demo job, sure enough, there is my name and my contact message. And I did want to really quickly point out that uh, I kind of did this mistake on purpose right here. Um, the entry viewer does have some, uh, some functionality to it, which you may find interesting. So for example, one of them is I can toggle edit mode right here. And if I need to, I can actually update and change an entry. And just when I tab out, it has now been updated, right? So I can, I can very quickly uh, use the entry viewer to do some powerful things. So that's basically how Rack Forms works. Again, we create a new job. We name it something. In this case, I'll call this sample. I then add an input page and a confirmation page, and then add field elements to each of those pages as needed. Now the one thing I wanted to real quick show here is if I load up this demo job, let's say that uh, I want to try some experiments with this job. And this is of course really common when you're learning a new piece of software. And you got the form the way you want it, but you want to experiment a little bit. So you want to create a copy of the job. To create a copy of a job in Rack Forms, really simple. All we do is we go back up to the job name. We edit it then with a new name, so demo v2. Click save job name. And now when I click Publish Form, 
I've created a copy of that job. So in fact, if I go to load a save job, I can see I have demo and then demo v2. In other words, to create a copy of a job in Rackworms, simply rename the job and save it. Finally, the last two uh, things I wanted to, uh, to briefly mention are um, the form concierge. Um, definitely take a, a minute to play around with this. This is how we can actually uh, automate some of the process that we just did by hand right there. So for example, if I wanted to, I could just use this start from scratch option right here to very quickly create uh, a new job for in this case, I'll say sample job. And then notice without essentially doing anything, I can click uh, build job right here and Rackforms will build the job skeleton for me. And now all I have to do is uh, just add form field elements as needed. I don't have to add a confirmation module anymore. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, just to real briefly mention that when we want to send um, our form uh, data out somewhere, we use a confirmation page. But of course, you're probably asking yourself, well, how do I get my form somewhere else? Um, how do I embed it on a page? And for that, we use the embed option right here. If I click this guy, what Rackforms is going to do is it's going to give me a snippet of HTML code. And now anywhere that accepts HTML code, um, we can simply paste that into, for example, a Facebook post or a WordPress post, and that, that uh, form will now show up on, on your page. Of course, if you have a WordPress blog or a Joomla installation, we actually have shortcuts for that. So in this case, I have a Joomla installation. Um, because I've provided my connection details to my Joomla installation, I can actually just go ahead here and uh, post forms directly to this. And I advise you to check out our blog, or invite you to check out our blog. We actually demo that directly. So that's our quick start tour. Then again, I uh, recommend that you start simple, and then we'll kind of work our way up through that. If you have any questions, of course, uh, info at rackforms.com is where it can be found. And uh, thanks for watching.